After days of searching the tundra, you finally find what's left of the missing caravan. A cart is overturned, its cargo strewn across the snow. The snow begins to crunch and take the shape of a beast. Fists of hard snow and ice begin to pummel you with great force. You've never seen anything quite like this. If only you had some sort of fire. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. Winter is no longer coming. Winter is officially here, at least up here in Canada. Although I gotta admit, it's been kind of a wimpy start by Canadian standards. You call that winter? The freshly fallen snow inspired me, along with all of the requests to make more monsters, to make a snow golem miniature. And I gotta say, I am super friggin' proud of this build for a few reasons. I've made monsters in the past before on this channel, but typically they're pretty big and it's one thing to make a big monster. It's another thing to make something that is the standard size of a 28 millimeter figure and have it look good. There's a few other reasons I'm super pumped about this. One is that not only is it small, it looks as good as a store purchased mini, at least I think so. It's also heavy, it's durable, it's made out of stuff you probably have kicking around your house. And the best part is, I took this from not existing to being primer ready in 20 minutes. That's it, it took me 20 minutes to build this thing and get it ready for paint. No waiting for drying time or anything. This is a clever way to build a miniature, at least I think so. So we're gonna build one. Oh, before we get started too, if you're interested in these cool Black Magic Craft shirts, I will put a link in the video description. I'd love to see you guys rocking these. Let's build a snow golem. The main ingredient for this build is crushed stone. I use two kinds here. The gray stone is some decorative gravel that I'm pretty sure I got from the dollar store. The black stuff is actually decorative crushed glass from Ikea. The gravel is good for the foundation and the glass looks even better for shards of ice since the pieces are flat and jagged, but you could definitely just use gravel for this. Now the challenge of actually building a humanoid figure out of tiny stones. I took a reaper base and started assembling the shape of the figure. I did this with dollar store super glue. The idea was to just slowly build up the shape layer by layer, but I really didn't want to wait around for each layer to dry to move on. Even with super glue, that would take quite a while and the connections wouldn't actually be that strong. So I turned to the old modeler trick of baking powder and super glue. Basically, I just placed my stones, dripped on some glue, then covered in baking soda. Blow off the excess and you are immediately left with a dry, rock hard, and super strong connection. The baking soda and the glue essentially welds the stones together and you can move on to the next layer without waiting. It also acts a bit like grout that will look like snow between the larger chunks of ice. It was easy to do the legs in this fashion, but the torso would be much harder, so I decided to construct it separately. I took some parchment paper and made a little pile of stones, then doused it in glue and baking soda. This gave me an instant front of the torso. I flipped it over and repeated the process on the back so that it wasn't totally flat on one side. Then it was just a matter of attaching the torso to the legs in the same fashion. The arms posed a similar challenge, so I did the same thing, making an arm separately and attaching it to the torso. I actually ended up just doing one arm as I thought two would make it look a little too comical and humanoid and less organic. Also, you know, one arm is like half the work.
I wanted to have a bit of a face on this thing, and I thought the easiest way to do that would be to embed a Citadel skull, as it's the perfect scale. After weighing my skull options, I decided on an orc one with an open mouth, as it looked to be about the best size and the most menacing. I attached it to the body with glue and baking soda, then started to surround it by larger chunks of gravel and glass. I only wanted a small bit of the skull showing. I chose some spikier shaped pieces for the very top so that it really looked like shards of ice or compacted snow. Then I decorated the base with the same materials and once it was done I cleaned up any excess glue that had made it onto the rim of the base. I primed out the mini with a flat white aerosol primer and got my first real glimpse of how this technique actually turned out. Once it was painted, I was relieved to see that it looked pretty decent and not just like a lumpy potato. I've actually never painted any snow or icy miniatures before and I wasn't sure how best to approach it. Plain white seemed a little too boring. But I'm also not a fan of snow creatures that are painted with a heavy blue look that I often see. I ended up trying to meet somewhere in the middle and do just a light blue wash to give it some depth. I have a blue wash from Vallejo, but it is very, very dark and heavily pigmented, so I watered it down significantly. For this, I used Pledge Floor Polish, which is another old modeler trick for making homemade washes. I went back over the mini with a quick dry brushing of white to remove any blue wash from the higher points. This looked okay, but I felt it needed just a little bit something more. Now I've had these color shifting paints from Green Stuff World for quite some time and never used them. They're meant for use with an airbrush, which I'm only starting to learn how to use and if you remember from previous episodes have been having a lot of trouble with. I recently got my hands on an Awada Eclipse and decided to try it for the first time here. Yeah, I'm weird like that and I like to try new tools for the first time in a non-straightforward fashion. This paint is meant to go over a glossy black to make the color shifting effect. I had no idea really how it would look over white but I picked one that was a shifting from blue to purple and decided to try it anyway. In the end, it looked pretty good. It was subtle, but it gave it a nice little bit of magical shimmer. I gave the piece a clear coating with Krylon matte varnish to seal everything in. And I thought it might look neat to highlight some of the bigger chunks of ice with a gloss varnish. So I brushed on some Vallejo gloss just to the bigger chunks. This effect was kind of nice, but like super subtle and I doubt anyone will actually notice that I did it. I had originally planned on leaving the ring of the base white to match the mini, but the paint on it was looking kind of chunky and in the end my compulsion to have all my mini bases match took over so I scraped off the chunky white paint and repainted a nice clean black ring. I'm very happy with this build. I love the technique I came up with to construct it. This build legitimately took under 20 minutes to go from nothing to spraying with primer. And that's pretty incredible. You could make a whole army of these things in a night and it will cost you basically nothing. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your builds, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store with links to all of the things that I use and recommend. Those are Amazon affiliate links and shopping with them helps fund these videos. I also put links to specific items used in episodes in the video description below. If you love these videos I make and you want to help me keep making them, you can do so by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds are a big reason that I can dedicate all of my time and effort into these videos and this community. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. And there you have it. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and most of all, inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. 
make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on next Friday's episode where I continue this winter theme and start building a massive modular snow terrain set. It's something I've been putting off for a long time, but I'm finally doing it and I'm excited for it. Oh, and don't forget, if you want some cool Black Magic Craft swag shirts, links will be in the video description below. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers, happy crafting, stay warm. <laughs>